in my friend group back in high school, I was the token black girl. <clears throat> oh boy. Hello my favorite people, welcome to not a new setup, but today's setup because my mom is out cleaning the house and she's making noise. So we're filming in my bedroom. And last night, if you watched my Instagram story, you saw that I was watching Leanne Pinnock of Little Mix's new documentary called Race, Pop, and Everything in Between, something like that. She was basically talking about her struggles being the only black woman in a very big girl group. And as I was watching the documentary, there were just so many different things that I noticed, related to, had opinions on. So I was like, okay, let me make a reaction or a review to the video because I know a lot of you will probably relate to what I'm saying too and a lot of you are fans of Little Mix. So here you go. If you've been on my channel then you know that I am very blunt. I say my opinion very unfilteredly. I'm not afraid of coming off ignorant because I just take that as an opportunity to learn new stuff. That being said, I'm going to be saying things and having a conversation with you guys that may make you uncomfortable or you may not agree with, which is okay because it allows us to have a conversation and get to know each other, I feel, better, thus letting us respect each other more. Now that being said, if you're a very sensitive person and everything offends you, I don't want to see you crying in my comment section. So keep that in mind. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get into the video. But for realsies, let me know if you like the new setup. So first up, I just want to point out that her making this documentary is actually very important because it opens up the conversation of race. It lets people have an opportunity to say, hey, this has been happening to me too. I just haven't had the opportunity to speak about it or I haven't been able to phrase it in a way that I feel like I can be making my points clearly. Leanne making this documentary and talking about her experience allows for other voices to be heard or be represented and it's very important I feel like for a black woman to speak up in the media. And bringing this back to me with my channels, my audience mainly is from the UK and every time I talk about social issues or personal issues or racial issues, I'm always met with comments that are like, oh race isn't an issue over in the UK, race is just a struggle Americans have to deal with, I don't see color, it's not, race isn't a big thing over here, we don't identify ourselves as race and I'm just like, First of all, how can you, you don't see color, you can clearly see that there's a difference between my color and your, your skin tone. Saying you don't see color is just, I feel like, an excuse for you not to have to rationalize or understand other people's perspective. It's kind of a way to just dismiss and act like nothing is happening. Saying I don't see color is a way for you to ignore what people of color have to deal with. You just put your hands up and say, well, I don't see color, so therefore it doesn't, it's not real, it doesn't exist, I have no part in it. But that's just as much of a problem, I feel like, as being a racist. So first off, I just wanna get about that right off the bat. Saying I don't see color or all lives matter completely takes away from the black community. And then going back to the whole race isn't an issue in the UK, it's kind of just like, according to who? According to who? Every time I've seen someone say that in my comment section, it's always a white person. Black people aren't oppressed in the UK. Maybe it's not something that your media amplifies as big as they do over in America, but I assure you, people of color are probably experiencing the same things that they do over here in schools, in the media, in the workforce, in the streets, over in the UK as they do in here. I'm sure there's no difference. And if you truly believe that there is no difference, you probably just don't know enough black people. I've said this before to you guys and I feel like I need to keep saying it because I don't think you guys have ever actually concerted this. Don't get so lost in this uh, better than-ism that you guys have for Americans. You guys know, I think most Americans are kind of, we have a lot wrong with us, but you guys see the, our faults and use that as a way to boost yourself up. I always get comments like, well, I'd rather be British than have to go to school in a gun range. It's a lack of self-awareness that is just confusing to me because my channel's audience is mainly adult. How can you have such bold opinions about America but have no self-reflection? Saying race isn't an issue in the UK, that is just stupid. In the documentary, it was talked about how you guys are taught not to bring up race and how don't apply race into everything, but 
it does apply because it influences the way people of color have to live their lives. You know, I can't take my shopping cart close to the exit just to go get an avocado by the door. I have to leave my cart aisles away because I don't want people to, they, they still do watch me, but I don't want them to think that I'm trying to make a break for the door. So there's just different experiences in life predominantly that are going to happen from you versus me just because of my skin color. So saying you don't see color is just ridiculous because it's clearly here. And I know there are going to be people who say that phrase isn't meant to be taken literally, like obviously, but why should I still have to lose my color, you don't see color, for you to just see me as equal? Like there's so many different special things about being a black person that I love, that make me me, that influence my personality. So you saying you don't see color kind of just tarnishes and takes away from a big chunk of my identity. Race is a, an important part of people's identity. I assure you it is an issue in your literature, in the way that your government or the royal family sees people of color, the media, music, cult, everything. It influences and is an issue. Next I want to talk about her depiction of what it actually is to be a member of Little Mix. I just thought like they were going on performances, like doing all this like cool stuff, trips, traveling. But when you get to see the behind the scenes of what it is to be a musician, I'm just like, I would never want that life. She was putting like glitter or something on her tongue, stuff was getting in her eyes, photo shoots all day, video shoots, music video shoots. It's, it looks like fun, but then when you really dissect everything they have to do, it is not a good time. So we moved on from like the professional aspect and we started getting into the nitty of the documentary. She talked about how she was the token black girl or she finally realized that for a little mix, she was the token black girl. And I completely related to that because in my friend group back in high school, I was the token black girl. And I feel like in many ways, my persona, the way I form myself, my being, my personality, is the token black girl. I feel like the world has so many different checklists that they need to meet to say that they're diverse. You know, you have a, a room full of white faces and you just need that one person to check off of some boxes. And when I say token black girl, you're black, but you don't make other people uncomfortable. Like if I were sitting up here speaking in a black scent, doing my hair crazy colors, wearing coop earrings, you know, stereotypical stuff. The, oh, can you imagine? There are so many opportunities that I've gotten in my life that I would not have been given. You know, the token black girl has to be presentable. She has to speak a certain way, sit a certain way. Even now I'm sitting up straight, shoulders up. It's like there's this image that has been created for you. There's this little box that you have to be able to fit inside and stay within to get opportunity or be seen. And it's kind of just like, why can't I just be me? Why do I have to fit into this mold that someone has made for me? And I started to think about like my token black girlness growing up and it's like all the people I was like hanging out with surrounded by I genuinely had nothing in common with them but yet they were my best friends it was the only person from that friend group I even talk to now is my best friend Sydney and she was the other token black girl but she was mixed yeah I loved growing up where I grew up but at the same time it's like I feel like there was a huge disconnect between me my blackness and what the world saw of me she went on to talk about how again with a token black girl, they would give her like the snapbacks, her choreo would be a little rougher, she had to like make facial expressions like, like being hot, you know, the wrap of pot. They dyed her hair crimson red and like shaved the side of her head. And I always reference this whenever I talk about the early days of Little Mix and I was like, what the heck are they doing to, to Leanne? To be fair, all the girls were looking crazy. Even Perry was looking messed up. I didn't even realize the undertones in regards to Leanne. You know, you have the snapbacks, you have the sneakers, she was the like, mm, I'm a black girl, yeah, that kind of, they were making her a stereotype. There's a box that you have to fit to be presentable. They wanted her to fit the box of being a stereotype. And for some reason, there's no in between. You're limited to these two definitions of what society says you can you can be. I must say now though, it is beautiful to see Leanne with like dreadlocks, box, braid, box braids, cornrows, you know, her makeup actually being her skin tone, contour, knowing what shades look good on her skin. Her glam team now I feel like has been amazing, but definitely back in the day from X Factor days, they just didn't, whoever the team was didn't know what the heck they were doing with a black woman's hair, styling or whatever. They were so busy trying to make her fit a caricature that they didn't just focus on actually making Leanne look good. Another point that really stuck with me was Leanne talking about a joke that some kid in primary school made with her. He like passed her a note 
and was like making fun of her saying my name's Leanne I'm nine years old and I'm from the jungle saying that she's from the jungle because she's a black woman basically comparing her to uh, a monkey gorilla that kind of thing just because she has brown skin and you know that's something that even was done to African Americans or said about African Americans back in slave days all through the 50s even till now you know you still get stupid racist remarks like that and I know in Britain it's kind of the sense of humor is kind of different and y'all in a way are forced to grow up with thicker skin. That being said though, just because it's a part of your culture, I don't think that makes it okay. You know, taking the piss is something that y'all have grown to, I feel like, just accept. Like you don't get to call me a fat cow and say it's just banter. Like no, you're just rude. You don't get to call Leanne a jungle monkey and say it's just banter, it's a joke. That's not a joke, that's racist. Not all dark humor has to be offensive or disrespectful. Like, if you can't be funny without insulting someone, you're just not funny. Don't do stand-up. And this can even go into the conversation of people wanting to fit the black mold but don't actually want to know what it's like or to be black. I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the channel, but I had an old friend. This is a part of the old crew crew that I had in high school. She told me, if you don't want me to say the n-word, then you shouldn't be saying it. First of all, why do you want to say a word that you know was used by white people as a derogatory, dehumanizing term against black people? Why would you even want to say that? The, just the tone deafness. Black people now have taken the word back and it's kind of like a camaraderie type word. It's like, yes, this word was used against us, but now like it's a, it's a kind of a communion thing, you know? Like, you're my bank, I'm your bank, and we're cool. There's a whole different power shift, and it is about, like, there's a power dynamic with that word whenever someone outside of the race says it. Then it becomes a whole different level, and it goes back to those days. And it's just like, I can't even fathom why someone would want to say that word if you're not in the community. And again, everybody wanting to be in the community, but not actually knowing what it's like to be the community. You know, darkening your skin, butt shots, lip injections, braids, cornrows, all that kind of stuff. It's like, ugh, you know, whatever. The most heart-wrenching part for me in the entire documentary was when she talked about, in fact, we got to see it. It was these three fans of Little Mix and they were, oh my God, they were all talking about who they most liked. And of course, Leanne wasn't chosen. And then the freaking, the announcer girl goes, don't worry, Lee, like making, like just let the moment pass over. Instead of just letting it glass over, she decides to like put a, put a flashlight onto it and says, don't worry, Leanne, you're my favorite. Like, and Leanne just had to like, <laughs> thank you, I know, it's, it's okay, it's okay. And that's why I say representation is so important because within that moment, maybe those three girls, Leanne wasn't their favorite, but guess what? There are a bunch of black girls that feel represented and seen with Leanne being on the platform that she is. I was wondering, she had mentioned that the, the fan base of Little Mix or Mixers are mainly white people. And is that just because they're a girl group from the UK? What is the race breakdown in in the UK? Like, how does that fall out? But like my sadness quickly flipped whenever like they showed the Brazil stuff and showed all the crowds of like brown people and everyone cheering Leanne, showing that she is important, she is valued, she is making an impact on people. There are only a few celebrities that I can really relate to and Leanne is one of them. So seeing her doing this for instance, or speaking on the George Floyd situation, it just kind of made me feel like a moment of proudness. And then we moved on to like a meeting she had with her mom and dad, and she expressed how she's always feeling the need to measure up, like she's not good enough. And there was a moment where, I don't remember what his name was, he worked with Beyonce or something, but he was like, you will have to work 10 times harder to get half of what they have. She was saying that she had like this need to always feel like she's measuring up to compare herself and I just don't understand why we do that to ourselves even me with YouTube I have to like just take a step back and realize okay you upload basically on three channels almost every single day you are working hard enough you are doing good I always feel like I have to push myself to do more 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 or if I take a day off I feel bad like literally I will not stop if I don't upload for a single day I, I like that's all I can think about like you didn't post today you didn't post today you didn't post today it's just you get in this never-ending cycle of wanting more, needing to do more, feeling like you aren't working hard enough. And I don't really know where it comes from, but I, th I think it was just interesting to see that I relate to Leanne in that way. One thing I didn't like that her parents were saying was that they told her she needed to just get thicker skin. You know, whenever she was getting bullied in school 
or people would say mean things about her because of her skin. It was like, you just need to toughen up. And she said she didn't realize why people would say the th things she did until recently, and she realized it was because of her race. And it's like, okay, well, race isn't something that you can change so it's like where do we go from here i've even gotten to the point where you can say whatever you want about me or in my comment section i'm not saying bully me but with the whole tiktok drama i was just in people harassing me in my dms it's just like i've gotten to a point especially with this internet stuff where it's like hey people are talking crazy on the internet guess what where are the haters now? You're not in my bedroom. You're not hurting my family. You're not messing with my grades. You're not messing with my job. So at the end of the day, I feel like anyways, the internet only has as much power and hold over you as you allow to give it. Why is it black women always have to be the strong person? Why can't we ever be sensitive? Why can't we ever be affected by something? You know, I'm not saying that I want to be softer, have people's opinions affect me because I don't. But at the same time, it's like from the time I was a child, I was never actually a child. I was kind of just like, taught these adult concepts from the very beginning. From the very beginning, you kind of have a target on your back. People have opinions about you. So you're kind of forced to grow up at a, from a young age. She started talking about her identity and her family's identity. It was actually interesting. She said she doesn't identify as a mixed person. She identifies as black, which is like an uncommon thing, at least in America. Most of the mixed people that I've met or know, my best friend, Sydney, she is mixed. They don't say I'm black, they say I'm mixed. Oh my god, we can go into a bunch of different things. Colorism, superiority, different issues that the black community has within itself. Especially in America, it's kind of like if you have curly hair, lighter skin, you are better than just a pure black woman. Saying I'm mixed is better than saying I'm a black woman. And I have never really understood the... Because, bitch, I have... It's, I've come a long way with my self-confidence. I'm confident in being a black woman. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. I couldn't care less either way, to be honest. I am me, I'm happy with me. That's really all that matters. Black girls, white girls, light skin, dark skin, all these like comparisons and stupid things that were going on trending on the internet. I was like, what is this nonsense? Now that being said though, do I believe that mixed race people will experience the same issues as black, not black, cause they're black too, but you know what, you know what I'm trying to say? non-mixed people no i do not believe mixed people will experience the same racial issues as people who are not mixed you know they get so many different passes it's, it's it is what it is from the curly hair the lighter skin there are different things that i feel like excuse them from certain certain hatreds so I, I don't think i can chime in really on the oh i'm mixed i'm still as black as you conversation because i think there's major differences between those sets of people within the black community and they're treated differently for sure. When you really think about it, how many dark skinned, speaking of dark skin, would Leanne Pinnock be in Little Mix if she was dark skin? Absolutely not. There's, no, she would not. She would not. How many top tier pop girlies do you know who are dark skin? Normani, SZA, but she's, I feel like she's still kind of on her come up. Beyonce is not dark skin. Chloe X Haley, they're still on their come up and they're not dark skin. SZA and Normani, the only two dark skin pop girlies. You want me to name some white pop girlies? Dua Lipa, Ariana Grande, Britney Spears, Lady Gaga, uh, Selena Gomez, Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish. I could keep going. You see the issue? I named two dark skin black women and you have this whole array of just... <sighs> but people love to say that they don't see color, there's no racial bias, there's no issue going on. And it's just like right in front of you, but you're you're acting like you don't see it. I love that she included like the protests and everything going on into the documentary because like that was, that just further shows though that race is in fact an issue over in Britain. You know, it went from just being an American Black Lives Matter protest to going international because race is an issue that everybody faces all around the world. Excluding yourself, your country from, oh, that's just an American thing is just stupid. Like they're literally in front of you showing, hey, you guys experience racism this way, we experience it this way. Not only do we get classism, but we also get racism. So I feel like in a way, people in Britain have it even worse than over in America. In fact, they definitely do because people try to deny that it even exists. So imagine being classist, imagine having racism, and then imagine people telling you that your experiences don't even exist. Ooh. Towards the middle of the documentary, she had this group of women come together and start talking. There was one woman from the Sugar Babes, which 
I don't know the Sugar Babes. I don't really know their music or the members or anything like that. But her story kind of made me like really sad and it did touch me. I could relate. As a black woman, you can't speak up or else you're rude. You can't speak up or you're aggressive. If you say how you're feeling or express that someone treated you a certain way, you're gaslighting them. You're you're a bitch. You're you're too much. You're savage. You know, you're the black girl. You're loud. It's 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 a I don't understand it. Again, this goes into fitting into the two boxes. Either you can be the prim and preppy black girl, but then you're losing your blackness, or you can be the loud, ghetto, obnoxious one, and you get no respect. You know, I had a professor a few semesters back ask me, what would I do if my employer or anyone told me, hey, you can't wear your hair in braids. You can't wear your hair naturally, which is like afro, curly, big. You can't do twists. You like." I didn't even know how to answer because at this point, not only is my identity, my expression being constricted, there's history in my hair. It's not just hairstyles. And I think that's why people get so like triggered or whatever, whenever they see like the Kardashians in cornrows or, you know, anyone outside of black doing black things. They just think it's cute. They just think it's trendy. You don't actually know the history behind it. Did you know the reason that cornrows have the different styles and dynamics and rows is because back in slave days, they actually one hid food inside their hair so they could eat while they're in the fields. They had maps to show where you can get to freedom. It's not just a hairstyle. There's so much culture and history behind hair. For people to say it's just hair, no, it's not. It never is. Oh, black braids are the same thing as the Nordic people or, well, the Scandinavians did it. Not in the same way and it doesn't have the same history. So I don't want to hear that bullshit. Hair, culture, forms of expression, all this stuff is like a deep rabbit hole and it kind of goes away from Leanne Pinnock and goes into a broader scheme of issues going on. And that's not what this video is about. This video is about blackness, her representation, black representation in the media, in pop culture, or the lack of it, and the issue of people wanting the black essence without acknowledging, loving, or seeing black people. I know this video was kind of like a long rant and I'm sorry about that, but let me know if you guys want me to do more commentary or just chit chat kind of videos like this because that docu documentary was like something serious. I haven't even watched the entire thing. I made it like halfway through. So if you want me to do the second part and have another like part two to this, let me know. Let's get, I don't know, 500 likes on this video and I'll do a part two. But yeah, again, this was not, it wasn't even just my opinion. This is just straight facts. It's literally talking about the black experience. And if you want to listen, cool. But if you don't want to, then that's your own problem. Bye.